Hey guys, Army Arms here. Welcome to another video and today we are going to be talking about the FMK Firearms Elite Pro. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and start off. Uh, the polymer box that you get with this thing uh, looks pretty cool. It looks pretty solid, pretty simple, straightforward, you know, nothing too fancy. So pop this thing open and there you go. Pretty much the basics, some gun lube, a safety lock, two 14 round magazines. It comes with extra suppressor sights, which is pretty cool. It comes with the plates for the optic. You can remove the optic. And this is also compatible with a Vortex or RMR. Comes with the owner's manual for the Vortex Viper. Now, before we get too far into this video, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys straight up, this gun was a huge flop, a massive disappointment. This gun is not reliable. This gun had double feeds. This gun had malfunctions that I've never even seen before that I didn't even know could be a malfunction. So you can decide if you want to keep watching this video or not and we'll go over everything yeah, on how it failed. Out. We'll kind of go through our normal regularly scheduled program as usual just so you can kind of hear our positives and what we really liked and why we had such high hopes for it. And then obviously we're going to go break down what we experienced. So anyways, let's get back into this. So FMK is an American brand. They're out of California and they are kind of known for putting patriotic phrases or whatever you want to call it on their firearms. And on the back plate here, it actually says freedom and liberty. And on the bottom of the magazine, it says E Pluribus Unum, which is the United States motto, which means out of many one. So the MSRP on these things is anywhere from 475 to 679 I believe we saw them going for. It comes with the Viper, the Venom, or the Burris Fast Fire. Uh, you've got the two-tone flat dark earth and the black. It's a good looking gun. There, this back strap here is not interchangeable, it's not removable, but it's really comfortable. The trigger is actually a pretty good feeling trigger. Pretty solid, pretty crisp reset. It actually uses Glock 19 sights, so you can swap out the sights with any Glock sights that you have. If you got Trigicon HDs or anything like that, you can swap them out. This is a four inch barrel, four and a half inch threaded. The length of it is just over six and a half inches long. I think it's 6.85 inches long. The width is 1.14. The weight of this thing unloaded is 23.45 ounces. It's the same size as a Glock 19. You could easily EDC this thing. The recoil, the ergonomics, all that stuff. Like this would be a great all purpose range gun, competition gun, carry gun, you name it. This would be a great gun for all these things, all these uses and all these options. Like I said, we had really high expectation with this. We don't really care about hurting people's feelings. They're not paying us. Nobody's paying us. We just want to bring you our findings, our data, our conclusions. So when we had this gun on the range, we had a lot of failures that were a no-brainer. You had double feeds battery failures, meaning almost every time you smack the magazine into the bottom of this thing, it forces the slide to release automatically. It's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Some, some people like it, some people don't. This one did it pretty much out of the box. The problem was every time it did that, we had a failure to go into battery every time. So when you change a magazine, look, you would have to plan like, on smacking the back of the like slide for it to go into battery or you're not going to fire it. So that was the battery malfunction or failure. We had double feed after double feed, and that was not from just one guy. We had multiple people shooting it. We had the same failures on all of them. It's nice that they put Thank You Armed Forces on the side there, though. I mean, that's cool. At least they did that. So the, a design flaw in this big time is it has front serrations here. It has rear serrations. You would like to use the rear serrations. You actually have to use the fronts because if you use the rear, this big piece back here is an extractor. So whenever you press there, or if you go to grab those rear serrations, it will release that extractor, causing the gun to not grab the round, the spent round, and you will have double feeds every time you do that. You either have to use the optic or the front serrations to rack it. the hell is that? It's not taking the round in the barrel out, it's just trying to double feed it. Mm. 
So another thing that we had on top of all those was the magazine. All three magazines are just not quality magazines. For whatever reason, we don't know if they make them in-house. They, I mean, they seem to only have FMK stamping on it, so we don't. they're not like Metgar magazines or anything like that. We actually had the follower stick while we had some rounds in it. We were working some reloads. We were changing magazines, you know, one shot, reload, one shot, running a couple drills like that. And as we were changing the magazines, all of a sudden the followers would stick. The rounds would just stack up on top of each other. They would get jammed up. They would, rounds had fallen out of the stinking magazine. And I was sitting there going, what the heck is going on? It just threw me off. I didn't know how to fix it. So I just had to smack the stinking thing on the ground and beat it a couple times before it finally just fixed itself. And that didn't just happen one time. It happened multiple times. What is this? In my opinion, you should not have to worry about resituating your follower or cleaning your magazines or anything like that in order to keep them running properly. That's just my opinion, but I just I think that's just how it should be. Maybe that's something that uh, FMK could fix. Maybe they could just change, you know, where they got their magazines made. But, like, that was just one on top of all of these other malfunctions that we had. So this was just bad stuff racking up left and right. Get a little uh, double feed there. So, uh, I don't know what that was. It just stopped. It just dead trigger. The round was in there. I pulled the trigger and nothing happened. But it doesn't look like it struck the... Interesting. <clears throat> no primer strike at all. Double feed. So, that... It's the second time this thing's fallen out just from... I mean, it's the second time it's fallen out. It didn't fall out. See, like, it just... I mean, you just touch it and the thing... Yeah, it's not strong enough. It, it, there's a lot of things that I like about this gun. and It feels good. You can get a high Go. grip. It feels like I'm shooting a Glock, but it doesn't have the hump. Like, it, when it actually ran, it was a good shooting gun. It was fun. So there's a couple of times where we were able to actually put a few rounds on target and, and get some hits, and it was very accurate. It was really accurate. If you do your job, the gun will do its job. So as long as the gun didn't malfunction, everything was smooth. We planned on taking it to a couple weekend local matches, and we didn't even get a chance to do that because the first day that we took the gun out, obviously it had so many malfunctions that we were just like, this is not even worth trying to take it to a match because we're not even going to get through one course of fire without having a malfunction or something crazy happening so we just at that point we were like no it's just not gonna be worth it we haven't had a chance to get a hold of fmk for like any warranty process but we really honestly don't even want to worry about that even if they have a good warranty you shouldn't have to worry about a warranty you shouldn't have to worry about sending your gun back to the manufacturer and getting a new one because of how bad it is and like you better hope that a company like fmk has a good warranty because if that is the case, and most of their guns shoot like this, which I hope they don't, I really don't. I really want to like FMK. I mean, I don't know if we just got a, you know, really bad lemon or something, but until then, you know, I've got my opinions based on this one gun right now. <laughs> uh, so, guys, our conclusions, we would just never trust our life with this gun, to say the least. Uh, so there's our thoughts, there's our conclusions, there's our video on the FMK Elite Pro. Wish we could say better things, wish it could have been a better outcome, but you know what? Not every gun's going to perform well, and you know you can't have every review being positive. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out. If you guys have bought FMK firearms in the past, if you currently have one, if you shoot one, uh, let us know your experiences. Does your gun run properly? Did we just get a lemon? Uh, we would love to know your guys' feedback. If you have any other suggestions, uh, please put it in the comments and let us know what other guns you would like to see reviewed and what other topics you'd like to be covered. And we appreciate the support and love. So thanks, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And that's it for us. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Press oh. check. Press oh. check. Press check. Press Stay check. Press check.